all the time, Leonard. Joan Collins was a beautiful girl. City on the Edge Forever was a good show. Were you jealous when I got the girl on this side of paradise? I wanted her bad. <laughs> I wanted to sniff those flowers. It's mine! <laughs> He's mean. He's really mean. I've been telling people this for years. Now, I want you to believe me tonight. I'm not kidding. He's mean. He's a mean person. He Leonard. stole my bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, your he bicycle. He stole my God. bicycle. I'm going to tell you the story. And I was not well at the time. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He took I... advantage of a, of, a, of, a, of a person in need. Yeah, you were in need. A person struggling in pain. You were in... He did. He hurt me badly. <laughs> I want you to know that. Is this being taped? Is somebody taping this? I want it on record. You know. <laughs> hurt you for the world, Leonard. But the problem was, every time they'd call lunch, you'd get on your bike and bicycle down to the commissary and get there ahead of line. That's line the logical thing to do. <laughs> Is there something I said? <laughs> He's pushing the thing back. Look, I'm looking it. for the water. You want some water? Yeah. It's true. I had a bicycle. It had my name on it, too. That's right, I said it right there, Leonard Nimoy. And I spelled it correctly, too. And I am a lie. Okay, and I used to get on the bike because, because we had not a lot of time to get from the, from the stage to the commissary to get your lunch and then get back to the makeup department and get the ears touched up and get back to the stage and go to work. So I used the bicycle. Right. And, and, uh, and one day I walked outside the stage and my bicycle was gone. Right. So I came in on the stage and I was, I was kind of upset. I said, who took my bicycle? Come on, guys. I got it here for a reason. You it, know, wasn't well, gun, it, it wasn't gun. It wasn't gun. It was chain. Somebody, no, this is before. Now, now, my friend here decides he's going to have sip, some fun with me. So mine. one day, one day after I had complained, he got my bicycle and he, and he uh, tied it to a rope and they, and they put the rope up in the rafters. And the ceiling, ceiling is higher than the ceiling here in a soundstage. And I, with my bicycle, and everybody starts laughing. Ha, 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 I mean, is, is that funny to hide a guy's bicycle? And I was not, I was in bad shape. I mean, I could hardly walk at the time. I was, I was like this, you know, Bill, you take advantage of a guy who's hurting. I was hurting very badly. I want some sympathy. Wait a minute. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. He's only telling you half the story. Let me tell you the rest of the story. When he first got the bike, he'd pedal like crazy and he'd get down to the commissary ahead of everybody else and he'd get lunch before everybody else had. Now these are important things. <laughs> so I bought a chain and one of those locks that when you shoot them they still remain in place. And I locked the bike to a, a, a fire hydrant. Why? And he came out and he said, who, who did this? Yeah, why would you do that? Well, because I had to get, we all had to have lunch too. Everybody had the right turn. We had to run down that street and get our lunch. So he got bolt cutters the next day and opened the thing and he got his bike. So the following day, well, look, I'm not going to help you out. No, no. <laughs> I don't need any help. I just, You're on your I, own. I want to know whether you remember this. I, I, I remember everything. <laughs> I breed, I breed Dobermans as, as well as do, uh, as well as uh, horses. Dobermans. Now Dobermans are great dog. They're very territorial. They love their master. And I, his dogs are meaner than he is. <laughs> and that's not easy. I'm territorial too. So, so I put my dog in my dressing room every morning to go and act. So when I saw that his bike was unchained and somebody could take it, I took his bike and I put it for safekeeping in my dressing room. And when he asked me where his bike was, I said, I put it in my dressing room for safekeeping, Leonard. And then I went off to lunch. He got very upset just because a Doberman went for his throat. 
I told him the best way to stop a charging doorman <laughs> is while it's in midair, yeah. you reach in and grab its tongue. The Vulcan death grip <laughs> immediately stops. I tried the Vulcan death grip, it didn't work. <laughs> The next day, I, I, had a, I had a very large car. I was driving a large Buick in those days. I had a large You're Buick. You're still driving parked, it. Outside, <laughs> parked outside the soundstage. And to protect my bicycle, I put it inside my Buick and locked the car. Guess who had my car towed away? guy. This is not a nice guy. <laughs> it was one of those flyer bicycles, and I still have it. They're worth a lot of money. Now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly. What was your favorite episode, Leonard? Spock's brain. I think we did a good job of putting it back in, don't you? <laughs> uh, there were a lot that, were, that, were, that, that I remember... Um, Finally, I, I really do remember City on the Edge of Forever being a wonderful episode, and um, and and I I really thought he was very good in it. I have to say the truth. I thought he was very good. Very good. And uh, I was I was very I was very affected by that love story between he and, and Joan Collins and and uh, the end of the show when when he did that last line about let's get the hell out of here. You know, uh, really there was something about it that. Uh, it was different. It was it was very touching. It was very real. Uh, it was a wonderful script. I thought it was well directed and very well acted by by Bill and, and uh, I, I remember it very very vividly. Um, I remember uh, this side of paradise, which which I thought was a, a wonderful Dorothy Fontana script. I, rem I remember the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Devil in the Dark, which I thought was a beautiful script. Um, I remember a mock time by Theodore Sturgeon. That was a show. That was a show where the words "live long and prosper" were spoken for the first time. Really? Uh, yeah. And I, I, I will never forget when she said to me uh, near the end of the episode when I thought that I had killed you, and and uh, uh, Cizilovsky, who a lovely actress who played Tipao, said, uh, "Live long and, and prosper, Spock." And I hardly could get the line out. She said, "Live long and prosper, Spock." And I, I could hardly say it. I had to say, "I will, I, I will do neither. I have killed my captain and my friend." And it really meant a lot to me to, to have to say those words. Uh, and then, of course, there was that people accused me of having smiled when I saw him again. I didn't smile. When did you realize that the Spock character had really taken taken the hold and was uh, had become so popular? When what, what, was there a specific moment? Or well, um, the very first time that I was asked to go out on a personal appearance after the show went on the air. Uh, was in Medford, Oregon, and it was, I think, uh, I think it was around December, January of, of the first season, so we'd only been on the air three or four months, and, uh, and it's the only time ever that I, I did what I did. I went to Medford, Oregon to be the, uh, the Grand Marshal in their parade at the Pear Blossom Festival, something they have there every year. And I went as Spock in character no. to ride in a car, in an open oh, car, with the ears down the main street of Medford, Oregon. <laughs> we never made it. We, we didn't make it. I mean, I got in the car. I got, they got me out of the hotel and in the car, and the, we were supposed to drive for about a mile down the main street and then end up in a public square. And after we'd driven about a block, the people started to come off the sidewalk and surrounded the car, and they, they was all they could do to get me out of there. I mean, it was such wow. a, a you know, incredible because you mob must scene. You know? You must understand that, that uh, we're actors, and those are characters. You do understand that. <laughs> and, and that it would be insane to put on a costume and, and a, a piece of wardrobe and go as... It was insane. As Captain Kirk. <laughs> and especially with the amount of makeup, he needs... Uh, well, hours. less and less makeup now, I, I see. <laughs> <laughs> but a couple of hours of makeup in order to put the ears on, which are in themselves irritating. I mean, the, the ears are... Uh, putting on the ears is like putting on a... You know, getting into a tank, I guess, and going off to battle. And for him to have done that... Because he's never done it again, 
Uh, I, am I right? That's right. And